Hello, Akuma fans. This is Charlie with the Gossiger Application Staff with another tip. Today we're going to file this tip under the category of cool stuff that Akumas can do. This is the load monitoring function that is available on all of Akuma's turning centers. Basically the overview of what's going to happen here. Once we've got a program proven out and we have fresh inserts in the machine, we can run the part at 100% rapid and the machine will memorize the amount of load that it takes to drive individual tools through the part. Then, once it has learned this threshold, then it will monitor each one of those tools as we specify, and it will alert us when the load that is required to push the tool through the part exceeds a given value. This is very handy for broken tool detection or worn tool detection really nooky. Let's start with the program itself. There are very few differences that we have to uh, incorporate in order to make load monitoring function. This is a code that's generated straight through uh, advanced one touch so you'll see a few different codes that may or may not apply to your machine but let's just deal with the important ones. The first that I want to point out is this guy right here VLMON brackets 1 equals 8. So the VLMON stands for variable load monitoring. Then the uh, number in the bracket, Akuma calls the part. I like to refer to it as the individual tool category. You can monitor multiple tools in a job and you have part 1 through 64 that you can utilize to monitor individual tools. I prefer to make this the same as the turret tool number, but if you have a subspindle that makes it a little difficult if you're monitoring one tool on the left that's in station 5 and monitoring a second tool on the right that's also in station 5. So the trick is to just come up with a load monitoring system that makes sense to you. What are you going to put in this part number? And that's simply where the machine is going to go to look for the individual tool parameters. Then the next set of uh, the next number here is a, a prime number that represents which axis you are going to be monitoring. In this case, it's axis number eight. Well, what in the heck is axis number eight? I'd like to point out that the entire load monitoring procedure is highlighted in the special functions manual section one that came with your machine. Now I already have that particular section brought up and we'll see right in the beginning that these are the prime numbers that represent the system variables which axis we're monitoring. In our case we are monitoring as you saw number 8 which is just the main spindle. So if I were to monitor X is 1, Z is 2, C is 4, so forth and so on, and if you want to monitor multiple axes simultaneously, simply add these numbers together. So if I wanted to monitor the X and the Z axis on the same cut, I could simply add 2 and 1 together and specify that VLMON1 is equal to 3. Because they are prime numbers, you can simply add them together if that makes more sense to you. I've also seen people key it in as each individual axis that, they're, um, that they are monitoring. So for instance, we are right now monitoring 8. If I wanted to add to that z-axis monitoring, I could either change that 8 to 10 or I could specify that that yeah, change it to 10 or if I needed to spell it out for somebody I could always say that it is 2 plus 8 and the machine will also understand that that is the z-axis and the spindle monitoring simultaneously. Seems pretty simple right? That list is very handy to have out, so in case you missed it, that's the Special Functions Manual, Section 1, and it's got all of those axes laid out as they are. So, in this case, load monitoring, the first section, the first part, 
is going to be monitoring now the z-axis and the spindle and it will stay on until the machine reads the code VLMON1 same part equals zero. That's one more uh, change to add to your program. If you think about monitoring a specific feed axis such as X or Z, you know that that axis load spikes every time the machine goes into rapid. So here we have M216 which is a very handy code during load monitoring. It simply means ignore the load of the load amount while the machine is in rapid mode. This way uh, you're not going to get a spike and a broken tool every time the machine tries to retract. The rest of the code is exactly the same. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and show you that okay now for the second tool I've got VLMON variable load monitoring parameter 2 is equal to 2. We already figured that out as being z-axis and this particular one is simply a drill right in the middle. You can also monitor live tools. Notice that now I've got, uh, that's not a good example, let's find the live tool. There it is. 16 is the mill tool that is monitoring just the load it takes to drive a live tool. So that could be a drill, an end mill, a tap, anything that you are suspicious of uh, wearing and you want to be alerted to, you can use the M tool. So now that we have made our modifications, we'll say yes, and we're at our machine now. There's our code and our load monitoring code just because we added those codes into our program does not necessarily mean that we're automatically load monitoring. You ever seen this little button on your machine? Most people don't use it very often but it's a little black key labeled machine operation. It's on the uh, on the NC panel. When I click on it I get this nice little overview that normally we'll talk about the touch setter or coolant or air blow. It's also the manual advance and retract for your parts catcher if you have it. But sitting all alone right here at the bottom is the load monitoring button. If we do not do this, then those codes that are in our program are just going to be ignored. So we first need to come to machine operation, touch the load monitoring icon, and now we will touch the word auto set or F2. Now the machine is in learn mode. Now, as I specified in the very beginning, we want to make sure that we've proven our program before we do this because we don't want to be reducing feed rate or reducing rapid rate, doing anything that's going to be different than our production run. So make sure your program is bulletproof. Then, machine operation, click on the word auto set, and now you'll notice that the load monitoring icon in the top of your screen will be blinking yellow. We could then execute the entire program all the way through and the machine will memorize the codes that we need or the, the uh, threshold that we need for each individual tool. Once that's done we could click over to monitoring and now the machine is going to, every time it runs that individual tool, it'll look at what was measured in the beginning as its nominal load and it'll warn us if the machine exceeds that, that threshold. Now how do we set the darn threshold? There's a good one. If we go over to our display change from our main operating screen, you'll notice that number five is load monitor. If you don't have that, showing up on your display change page. Arrow over one time, find menu change. And this is how you screen out individual uh, options from your display change page. At this point I'm just going to select all display so that they're all on. Now by touching load monitor and closing display change this is a nice big graph that's going to show us as we're machining the types of loads that we see experienced. Also in this page, here we have under F4, the limit levels. Remember we talked about part number or tool number, the parameter number, 1 through 64. There it is, it's sitting right here. Once we have run through the entire part with the machine in auto set mode, we will then 
see the base percentage of the axis that we were monitoring show up here and we have the opportunity to change the first limit and second limit based on what that value is. Since I'm on a simulator that's not actually connected to a machine, I can't run through this for you, but let's just say for instance that it came up with a load of 10% for X and my first limit I could set to say be 15 and the second limit could be say let's put it at 18. Now we have those values in there as long as the machine is running in between 10 percent and 14.9 percent everything's going to be running happy. As soon as it touches 15 percent I'll get a big alarm or a uh, warning on the top of the screen that's indicating that a tool is worn. The machine will not stop at that point it's simply telling me hey you're starting to run over that first limit percentage. That way, okay, I have a little window of opportunity to change the tool or the insert. But once that tool exceeds 18%, the second limit, the machine will stop right then and there. It'll let me know, hey, your tool is broken. I'm not even going to try to move, so the heck with you. One more time, I'd like to reiterate that if you don't have the monitoring key depressed on this page and you don't see the yellow load meter on solid while you're running you're not being protected even though you have those codes inside the program. Hope this helps you out. This is a very handy tool. I use it on just about every part. If you have any questions about that feel free to reach out to your local application staff with Gossiger Engineering and we'd happy to help you any way we can. Thank you.